Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about inheritance. So inheritance is basically one of the most important properties of any object oriented programming language. It's basically a concept and the concept says that what if you have a scenario where you want multiple classes to share similar behavior and similar properties. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Let's take the example of a bank. When you go to a bank to open an account, there are multiple types of accounts. There can be a savings account. It can be a type of current account. There can also be a different offering for personal account and commercial accounts such as for businesses. Then you may also have loan accounts which are having different kind of properties. So all of these types of accounts are still technically accounts and they will share some similar properties. For example, all of them will have to maintain some sort of an interest rate. For example, all of them will be used to either deposit money or withdraw money. So there would be some kind of similarity across all of these types of account classes. But at the same time, there will also be some sort of differentiality amongst these classes. The way you will calculate the interest rate for a current account will be different from the way you will calculate the interest rate for a savings account and the same applies for commercial account, personal account, loan account, etc. So you see that we have some common behavior, but at the same time, we also have some different behavior. So whenever you have such scenario, always think about applying the concept of inheritance in your application. There's another simple way to spot whether inheritance can be used at a particular place or not. Inheritance is also called is a relationship. So whenever you read the requirements from a customer, just try to find the words which use this particular phrase is a. For example, car is a vehicle. Savings account is a type of account. Similarly, you will find many other types of similar examples. So whenever you will see that is a relationship between two different kinds of objects or two different kind of entities, that means that there might be an inheritance relationship being applied between them. And that's how you will spot the usage of inheritance. So, so far we have understood this concept that there would be some sort of relationship between the two classes. What will be this relationship? The relationship will be of parent child type. There will be a parent class. Some people also call that as base class. And then there will be a child class. So the child class will be inheriting the properties and the behaviors from the base class or from the parent class. I will be using base class and parent class terms interchangeably during this session. But the basic idea and basic premise is like that only that there will be a child class and there will be a parent class and the child class class is extending from the parents class. Remember the word extend because we are going to use that. And I've just shown you the uh, what you see here is basically the official definition which is given by Java Docs here. We can read the definition as well. And the basic idea which I told you lies in the parent and child relationship. And this is how you can conceptualize it that you will have a base class or a parent class and then you will you can have multiple children of it. And then those children can again have their own children and so on and so forth. So this hierarchy, this whole inheritance hierarchy can go as deep as you want it to be. And that's the basic idea and basic conceptualization of how you understand and how you visualize inheritance. Now let's move to Eclipse IDE and try to understand this with the help of an example. So for this particular case, I have created a set of classes basically, which we will be using to demonstrate the relationship of inheritance. And I've taken the simple example of a bicycle. So a bicycle is again a very generic definition of any two wheeler and bicycles can have multiple types. There can be an all terrain bike. There can be a mountain bike. There can be a city bike. There can be a bike which is specific specifically made for ladies. And similarly, there can be multiple different types of bikes. But all of these bikes will have some similar properties. For example, all of them will have two wheels. All of them will have a seat. All of them will have brake. All of them will have some sort of, of some sort of a, a speeding mechanism whether they can accelerate or deaccelerate. De so there will be some commonality. But at the same time, a mountain bike's features might be very different from a city bike feature. A mountain bike features might uh, feature uh, mountain bike might have gears, for example. Whereas a city bike might not have gears because you don't need 
that much of a variation in uh, in inclination and declination when you drive down the road so i'm trying to conceptualize the same example here where i've created a class called bicycle and this is my base class i define two properties in the in the bicycle class which is gear and speed we will come back to protected in a while but uh, let's let's leave that there so i have two properties which is gear and speed i have a constructor where i'm initializing the starting speed and the starting gear and then i have three methods here which says set gear apply brake and speed up when i apply brake the speed is going to get reduced so that's why you see minus equal to unary operator and when i'm trying to speed up the speed is going to increase that's why i'm using the plus equal to unary operator so when you use the method speed up the speed is going to be increased by the value you supply in the method similarly when you apply the brake the speed is going to get reduced by the amount you supply in the method argument and that is my base class bicycle gear speed and three methods now let's have a look at the child class so the way you will define the inheritance relationship in java is by using this extends keyword remember i told you to remember the extends keyword so what you will do that you will write your class name as usual and then you will use extends keyword and then you will use the parent class name or the base class name so here i'm saying class mountain bike extends bicycle and here i'm providing an additional property remember the whole commonality versus differentiality equation so a mountain bike might have an extra property to adjust the seat height so that's the extra property which mountain bike is having and then since this mountain bike is extending the bicycle class this mountain bike class has the responsibility to initialize the bicycle class as well and the way it will fulfill that responsibility is by taking all the arguments of bicycle class plus the mountain bike class in its constructor and that's why you see three different properties here you see the start height property which is the uh, property of this particular class which is the seat height and then you see the start speed and start gear property which directly are not available in this class but this class is inheriting those properties from the base class remember the keyword inheritance here and then once you do that how do you initialize the base class constructor is by calling the super method this is again a keyword in java and you will use this super keyword to refer to the base class constructor in this way so what you will do technically is that you will write super and you will supply the arguments which is required by the base class constructor if i go back the base class constructor requires two arguments start speed and start gear so i write super and then i write start speed and start gear so whatever i got from here in the constructor of mountain bike i'm supplying those values as is to super and java will automatically take care of invoking this particular constructor the moment it uh, it uh, encounters this kind of statement another another thing to notice is that the super keyword or super statement has to be the first statement inside your constructor remember that whenever you are dealing with inheritance and whenever you have to initialize the super class constructor or the base class constructor use the super constructor invocation as the very first statement inside your child class constructor otherwise java will not compile the program and then you will initialize the local variable i should call this as this remember i we discussed about this in this uh, in the classes session okay and then it just has a method of set height so there's no extra method which this mountain bike is providing but this mountain bike will have access to all the methods which have been provided here and all the properties which have been provided here this mountain bike can access everything from the bicycle class and that's the whole idea of inheritance that the child class can access the properties of the base class by extending the base class now let's look at how do we invoke this particular class so for that i have a simple class name as inheritance demo which has a public static void main method and then i am initializing the mountain bike class i'm supplying three values as 20 10 and 1 so the 20 goes to start height the 10 here goes to start speed and 1 here goes to gear or the start gear and that's how i'm setting the values 
So when I call this particular constructor here, the mountain bike constructor is going to, this uh, mountain bike constructor is going to get called and which in turn is going to call the base class, bicycle class constructor as well and everything will be set accordingly. And then let's try to access the gear property. Remember gear is not directly available in the mountain bike class, but I'm still able to do mountain bike dot gear because child class can access the parents class properties. Similarly, the same thing goes for speed as well and seat height is the local property of this particular class mountain bike. So it will anyways be accessible. So I can access all the properties of the base class and the, the child class itself seamlessly without any differentiation. Now let's try to call a method. So here I'm calling the method apply break. Remember apply break was defined in the base class, not in the child class. It's defined here. So I'm calling the apply break method and I want to reduce the speed, the current speed by one. And then I'm printing the current speed saying that bike speed after applying break is mountain bike dot speed. So let's run this particular program and observe the outputs. Okay. So the, the first statement which gets printed is at line number seven, which says gear is one because it's coming from here. Then the seat height is mountain bike dot seat height, which is 20, which is the first argument here. And then the bike speed is 10, which is coming as here and getting printed here. And then when I apply the brake, let's go back to the apply brake method. The logic is that whatever is the current speed, reduce it by the value I supply in the method. So if I supply one, 10 minus one becomes nine and that becomes the current speed. If I supply five here, the current speed will be 10 minus five equal to five. Let's assert that particular assumption as well. Yes, we can see that. And similarly, you can access other methods of the base class as well. If I just do control space here and you can see apply break is accessible, set gear, set hide, speed up, all the methods which are defined in the base class are accessible in the child class as well. This is the power of inheritance. One more thing which I said I will come back to is around the usage of protected access modifier. Remember when we discussed about the access modifiers in the previous session, I said that protected is used when you are dealing with inheritance, that whenever you define something as protected, it will be available to be accessible in the child classes of the base class. So if I define this particular variable as, as protected, then this particular property will be accessible in the child class mountain bike as well. Let's play around this. Let's make this as private and see what happens. So if I make this private, now when I, when I say private, the scope of this particular variable is within the class only and nobody outside the class will be able to see it. And you can see the effect of it. I can see an error being coming here in my inheritance demo class because now mountain bike object cannot access the gear property because the gear property is defined in the base class and now it is private. That's why the child class now, mountain bike class cannot access the property gear. And the moment you make, make it back to protected, it will be accessible. The error is gone. There's no red line here. So that's how you can, you can use the protected access modifiers. It is always, always recommended to use them when you, when you write any kind of inheritance logic. And in inheritance logic as well, intentionally, if you want to hide a particular uh, property from the child classes, just make it private. And that's all I want to cover in this particular session where we uh, dive deep into the concept of inheritance. We had a look at an example using the bicycle and mountain bike kind of construct. And you can apply the same kind of construct on any kind of other, other kind of uh, business requirement. Remember the is a relationship. So that's all I want to cover in this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to talk about another very interesting concept of Java, which is about encapsulation. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.